Multiplicative reasoning is an important thread that runs through our curriculum right from foundation phase through to FET phase. It is thus really useful if we can link the different scenarios that happen across the phases that are underlain by multiplicative reasoning. And the way we can create that link is by being careful in the language we use and in the representations that we use so that there is coherence across them, across the grades. So let me illustrate what I mean by this. If we think of a typical foundation phase scenario involving multiplicative reasoning, it would be something like this one. Every bag contains three apples. So one bag has three apples and two bags, six apples, etc, etc. And this kind of representation is a very useful representation for that scenario. The red dots in the middle are arranged nicely to form an array. And you can then quite easily see that as you go from one bag of apples with three apples in it to two bags of apples, you've just got a three and another three, in other words, six apples. And what you can see is something like this. When you've got five bags of apples, you've got five lots of three apples. So it's 15 apples that you have. And then you can also see, for example, if you move to 10 apples, I mean 10 bags, you're going to have to, because you've doubled the five bags, you've got to double the number of apples. And you can see that very nicely in the array picture. And we can, in a similar way, see division in this picture too. In other words, we can see that if we know that five bags contain 15 apples, that one bag will contain three apples. As we go on, we can compress this representation to form what is called in caps a clue board. And this kind of clue board is a very useful representation and in fact one that we use all the way through even into high school. So this representation is exactly as before. If we know that in they're the same number of apples in each bag and in six bags we have 18 apples. If we want to know what's going on in one bag, well, we have to divide by six and so we know that there are three apples in one bag. The same representation then can be used for ratio. So if we know that the ratio of boys to girls is three to two, that means for every three boys, there are two girls. And then we can start asking ourselves questions like, well, if there were 12 boys, how many girls would there be? And we can see that we've multiplied the number of boys by four, and so we need to have four groups of two girls, and so we're going to have eight girls. So this multiplicative thinking underlies ratio, and if it underlies ratio, then it obviously also underlies the fraction concept as well. And these ideas move right through into senior phase where we see that same multiplicative reasoning underlying the notion of gradient. So if we have a look at a scenario like this one, where we have a straight line, and we see that for three steps in the horizontal direction, we go two steps in the vertical direction, that tells us for every three steps in the horizontal direction, we must go two steps in the vertical direction. So now if we move from 9 to 21 in the horizontal direction, that is 12 steps in the horizontal direction. Now we know that for every three steps in the horizontal direction, we must go two steps in the vertical direction, and 12 is just four lots of three steps, and so we must go four lots of two steps in the vertical direction, in other words, eight steps in the vertical direction, 
And so we get to that point over there. And so that point over there is going to be 8 steps up from 5. So it's going to be 13. So this very same multiplicative idea, multiplicative reasoning idea, and that language of for every 3 you go 2, underlies the notion of gradient in senior phase 